Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer and moved to Arsenal. Only a week to go now until that transfer window shuts, and that's it. Those are your players for the season. Well, up until January, you can bring a couple in, but basically that's your team, right? So busy period now for Mikel Arteta and for Edu. Uh, time to decide on who's staying and to see who else they need to bring in. We spent £129 million, as you all know, in the transfer market. Sensible signings, I feel, but still a little bit underwhelming. Will Arsenal bring in a massive name before the end of the window? Just to, you know, I kind of I kind of label it that sort of um, Bruno Fernandes effect. That, you know, remember when Manchester United bought him in, he changed everything. At Man United, he bought excitement. He was a game-changing signing. Are Arsenal looking to do something like that before the end of the transfer window, or is this going to be it? I don't think so. There are other players to come in. And also, um, the manager himself, Mikel Arteta, at the moment, under a lot of pressure. You know, as you all know, you know, we've lost our first two games. We face West Bromwich Albion tomorrow. That's going to be a tough game. They've been flying so far. And then Manchester City at the weekend. A lot of reports today. We're talking about transfers. A lot of reports in the um, newspapers saying that he's got five games to save his job. They're looking at, the, you know, um, more at the Premier League games and they're saying Manchester City away, Norwich at home, Burnley away, Spurs at home, then that Brighton away. If he doesn't get good results within those games, he could be gone. And we all know how football works. It might not be even be as long as that. I mean, the talk is they're determined behind the scenes. You know, Josh Kroenke's and the Kroenke family are determined to, to keep Arteta. They've got a lot of faith in him. But how long does that faith last if he doesn't get results? And do they then move for Antonio Conte, who's sitting around on a lounger somewhere with his feet up, ready for that next big job? Of course, he nearly became the Spurs manager. He turned that down in the end. He's sitting out there and he's waiting. And how do you guys feel? Do you feel that, you know, Mikel Arteta deserves more time in the job? You know, he's two games, two games in. He spent a lot of money. Surely they're not going to sack him yet. They're going to give him more time to try and get it right. But how long do you guys give him? Would you give him those five games or would you look on it and say, well, listen, if we lose to West Brom and City during that international break, it's the time to make the change. Listen, I'm not advocating to, to sack him at this stage, but the thing is, Conte is out there waiting. If you look at the Chelsea situation, what they did, they knew Thomas Tuchel was out there. They didn't hesitate. They moved and got it done. Do we need to adopt that sort of Chelsea style of doing things where it's just like, you know, press a button? Or do we wait and see how he gets on over these games? Conte's out there. Just like when we brought in Arteta, Allegri was there, waiting, jobless. And we didn't move. So going to be interesting to see what happens on that front. But in the meantime, Arteta's busy and only got a lot of players that he needs to move out before the deadline day. One player who looks to be heading out is Willian. We spoke about it, how he was liking posts featuring Chelsea players, you know, after the defeat. That didn't go down well. He's been out of the team with COVID. Um, but it looks like he may not be coming back to the team because he's in talks at the moment with Corinthians um, over there in Brazil about a return to his home country on a free transfer. Um, so there'd be no fee involved. Remember, we got him on a free transfer. There'd be no fee involved. And he just... Uh, go straight over to Corinthians. What sort of deal they do, Arsenal, regarding his wages? Will there be some sort of little bit of payoff to him? I don't know. I'll tell you what, that transfer of Willian to Arsenal should be investigated, in my opinion. Three-year deal on over £100,000 a week when we had loads of players who can play out wide. It was just ridiculous. And that was a Mikel Arteta signing. You know, some of these signings now, it's it's no longer, we're not, no longer at that stage where you can say, oh, well, Emery signed him, or it was a missling tap signing, or Raul, you know I mean? 
These are Arteta and Edu signings. Willian, Cedric. These sort of signings where people are like, yeah, why, why are we buying Cedric for? Pablo Mari, all of these signings, they're his. Can't turn around and say, well, it's because we've got Ozil and we've got Vic. No. So, Willian, that's been a disastrous signing. Disastrous signing. 33 now. And look, we're having to give him away after a season. Yeah, I mean, it can't even get any sort of um, transfer fee or anything for him to go. But we definitely need him off the books. And he's made zero contribution, really, since he's come here to Arsenal. Another player who looks set for the exit is Eddie Nketiah. Um, but they're having problems trying to sort out a fee for him. Now, Crystal Palace want to buy Eddie Nketiah, who, remember, has got a great goal-scoring record when it comes to the England under-21s and, you know, in the under-23s. Very enthusiastic player, but it's just not, you know, he's just not got the goals for Arsenal. He's been given quite a lot of opportunities, but it's just not got the goals for Arsenal. I can see him actually going to a... Crystal Palace and doing really, really well because he is a talented young player. And you can see he's hungry and he wants to score goals, but it just hasn't happened for him at Arsenal. Now, Crystal Palace are said to be willing to pay um, a fee of around about £10 million for him, but Arsenal are looking for £20 million. <laughs> um, They're not going to get £20 million. Uh, If they get £20 million, wow, they would have pulled off a great deal. I think... There'd be some sort of compromise done on this one, maybe somewhere in the middle. And as I said, I think it'd be good for Eddie's career. Go play under Patrick Vieira. You know, you'd be in a good team. He's still going to be in London. Um, I think it'd be a good move for him. But they're trying to negotiate that one. There's a big gap at the moment between um, the fees. But Arsenal looking to sell Eddie and Ketcher. And Lucas Torreira looks to have played his last game for Arsenal. Um he was on loan, of course, last season at Atletico Madrid. He's set for another loan, um, this time to Fiorentina. Um, there's been a lot of clubs. He's been one of the few players where there's been a lot of clubs interested in, in his signature. There's been Lazio. There's been Roma. Eintracht Frankfurt as well. Um, they've come in recently um, wanting to take him on loan as well. But it looks like um, it's Fiorentina that he's heading to. Um, an initial loan, a season-long loan with a loan fee um, being paid, and then an option to buy um, for Fiorentina of around about £12.8 million. Remember, we paid about £27 million. Again, it's going to be a big loss. He's hardly played. He's been out on loan time after time. It's just not worked out. But Lucas Torreira set to leave Arsenal um, for past this new. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a shame with Lucas Torreira because I've always looked on it and thought, I'm sure, I'm sure we could have got more out of him. I'm just, you know, I'm sure we could have got more out of this player, but it's just not, it's just not happened. It's just not happened. And, you know, Emery didn't get the best out of him and nor is Arteta and uh, looks to be heading out. So good luck to Lucas Torreira wherever he ends up. Um, Arsenal still interested in Kieran Trippier. Now, we know that Arsenal are desperate for a right back, even though we've got Bellerin, we've got Ainsley Mate and Niles, Chambers, Cedric. <laughs> Effectively, like four people who can play in that position. As um, they used to have a saying in Jamaica, my dad used to say, like, you know, four can't make one or two can't make one. That's what, you know, nobody's really grabbed that position. Um, and Kieran Trippier is seen by Mikel Arteta as the ideal um, player to play in that position. Again, the problem is the valuation. Um, Atletico Madrid want around about £34 million for Kieran Trippier. Now in his 30s, no chance Arsenal going to... Well, I don't know. I hope not that Arsenal are going to pay that. But Arsenal said to have reignited their interest in Kieran Trippier and will be talking to Atletico Madrid hoping that maybe that fee can come down before transfer deadline day. We need a right back. A right back is needed, a specialist right back. And I'm not talking Cedric. I'm on about someone, a grade up. Um, so let's see how that works out. Or will they move in for another right back before the end of the transfer window? And of course, yesterday there was rumours about Abamyang as well. 
you know, that Arsenal would listen to offers. I mean, some of these stories, actually, when they come in, when you read them, Arsenal would listen to offers for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang if those came in. That's probably quite obvious because, you know, he's getting older and he's not had a great season. But I don't think Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is going anywhere. And when you've seen, you know, the fact that we can't hit a barn door at the moment, you know, getting rid of strikers without replacing them would be absolutely ridiculous. So I don't really see much in that room at all. I think Aubameyang, we have to wait and see what he does this season. He, he's, you know... He's had malaria, he's had COVID now, he's had lots of issues behind the scenes. Let's hope he can get it together for this season because we need those goals. Um, but uh, those rumours around today as well. Listen, thanks for watching the show today. As I said, one week to go on Transfer Deadline Day. We'll be doing a special here on AFTV, keeping you up to date with everything and anything that happens. All the exits, all the incomings, We'll be all over it um, here on AFTV. Don't forget to check out our AFTV News Daily tonight. I think it's Turkish and Dan Potts on. They were on last week. They were absolutely brilliant. Um, I think they'll have a lot to say about what happened at the weekend. Um, and looking forward to that game tomorrow where we play West Brom. We're going to be all over that as well. Um, we'll be at the game. Also, the guys will be in the studio doing um, the Match Day Live, so make sure you check that out as well. Um, so it's all happening. Busy week. Man City again at the weekend as well. So busy, busy week here. Let's hope that Arsenal can start picking it up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.